Today we're going to go over some two cats in the wild that are as small or smaller than house cats, but they're so cute. This one is the sand cat. The Arabian Desert, one of the harshest ecosystems on the planet. We need one of those. Summer days see scorching temperatures of 40 degrees Celsius. 40 degrees Celsius? And during winter nights, the temperatures plunge well past negative 25. Hairy camel. The <gasps> animals that call these dunes, rocks, and canyons home specialize in the extreme. <laughs> One of these desert residents is a small one. <laughs> He's in a hole. We've never heard of. <coughs> the sand cat. Out of the sun. Ah, he's so cute. He looks like a kitten. Yeah, forever kittens. <laughs> they may look like house cats, but these beige beauties are the only cat to live predominantly in the desert. <laughs> oh, and they're cute. built to handle its extremes. On especially face. hot days, the sand can I reach temperatures of 80 degrees Celsius. 80 hot degrees? enough to burn a cat's feet. Celsius. Yeah, that's really hot. Sand cats, however, have long fur that covers their pads, protecting them from the hot Arabian sand. <laughs> this comes with a secondary benefit. It allows them to leave almost no footprints, <laughs> making it near impossible for predators to track them. But in the desert, Ooh. heat is only half of the equation. Just put some fur on our boots. With little water vapor in the air to trap warmth, at night, temperatures plunge into the freezing. Ah! <laughs> Fortunately, sand cats have a thick coat that insulates their body from the cold, keeping them warm at night and cool during the day. Wow. I wonder how much they weigh. They're so little. Yeah. Spotting a sand cat is difficult. They live in low densities, they're extremely well camouflaged, and when they move, they stay low to the ground. Even when they run, they'll keep their bellies as close to the ground as possible. While they may look silly, they can still top 40 kilometers an hour. Wow. Wow. In his little hole. During the day, they will try to avoid the intense sun by napping in the shade or mm. in their burrows. Me too. At night <laughs> is when they're most active. Me their too. habitat is almost barren. Vegetation, water, and prey are rare. To find a meal, sand cats travel vast distances, covering up to eight kilometers a night. Their massive habitat is sparsely populated by creatures doing their best to stay undercover. <laughs> to find something to eat in this trying terrain, sand cats have two big advantages. Their ears. <laughs> their ears are giant and contain an ear canal that's roughly twice as wide as a domestic cat's. Wow. These cats can pick up very low frequencies. A helpful skill in the open desert, where low sounds travel the furthest. Like cat These owls. adorably oversized ears allow them to hear prey scuttling in the sand up to half a kilometer away. Half they eat crickets? Oh, With meals everything. few and far between, these cats aren't picky eaters. They'll eat whatever they can get their paws on. In this case, a cricket. <laughs> the desert is a dry and unforgiving place to bugs. live. The sand cat will have to take what she oh, can get. Oh, so cute! Water is scarce, but sand cats don't need it. They have adapted to survive without having to drink water. Instead, they get all the moisture they need from their prey. From their blood. <laughs> Though this sand cat has her ears on something a bit more substantial than a cricket. A mouse. <laughs> she picks up on the sound of it scurrying over the ridge. She has to move quickly and quietly, or she'll lose it in the rocks. She lowers her body to the ground, ready that to pounce. That looks suspicious. Why does the color keep changing? <laughs> Lucky for her, the mouse didn't hear her coming. Ah! 
a white she swallows can't. it whole and runs off Mouse. into the night. <laughs> While their big ears help make them deadly predators, they have another use, listening for other sand cats. <laughs> These like felines kitten. live at very low densities, and between two potential mates may be dozens of kilometers of harsh terrain. They'll call out, making a sound resembling a bark. <laughs> if they're lucky enough to find a partner and succeed in mating, mothers will usually have a litter of three <laughs> kittens. They look like little orange The kittens cabbies. grow fast, reaching three quarters of their adult size in just six months. In a year, they'll be independent. Their coat looks iridescent. Like all small cats, sand cats are incredibly elusive, and we know very little about them. Their populations are spread out in remote areas with harsh environments. And so, studying them is almost impossible. Fortunately, for the same reasons that they're hard to study, they're also protected from poaching and human encroachment. In fact, until 2015, we knew almost nothing about these desert-dwelling felines. Ah, so cute! <laughs> Their ears, they look like little cat owls. All right, let's move on to salt cats. Where Another, uh, wow, you know what I just cats realized? Are cats everywhere. are super adaptable to like the desert or these salt plains, we'll see. Jeffrey's cats preside over a large kingdom, thriving in a wide variety of habitats. Mountains, forests, savanna, shrub, and grassland. Most of their territory is arid or semi-arid, like Bolivia's salt flats, which have given them their nickname Saltcat in German, which were commandeering for this episode. This one if you like are ever lucky enough to spot a salt cat in the wild, their size and coat will give you a clue as to where they hang their hat at night. Like with most species, the closer to the poles they are, the chunkier they are. <laughs> salt cats are no exception, and the warmer the locale, the skinnier their bod, and vice versa. Huh. Oh, right. Another clue to their home are their coats. In the warmer, northern populations, their coats are an ochre color. While well, in the south, they are a silvery gray. This reflects the change in topography of their habitat. To the camouflage. But the coolest salt cats are the swamp dwellers. <laughs> Most commonly found in forests and wetland habitats is the melanistic variety of the salt cat. Oh, it's like a mini panther. These black beauties have an elevated level of melanin, a skin and hair pigment that allows them to camouflage more effectively in their darker habitat. At night, they're, they're unspottable. This not only makes them more effective predators, but it's it really makes stripes. you want to boop their snoot. Ah. Not that you should. I know, they're so cute. At first glance, you noses. might mistake a salt cat with a house cat, and yeah. you'll be forgiven, Until he as they're about you. the same size, weighing only four kilograms. Wow. Dang, OG And that's not so all fat. they share with house cats. <laughs> they too seem to forget what they were doing mid-step and start to clean themselves. <sighs> cats will be cats. <laughs> Grasslands being their primary habitat, salt cats have long legs built for getting around. One reason for their long legs is to potentially help navigate floodplains. One of the most concentrated populations of salt cats are found around rivers in the Pampas region, which are prone to flooding. Having long legs gives the salt cats an advantage over other predators. <laughs> While they aren't as arboreal as some of their cousins, what they are adept in the trees. Whether to escape a predator, to ambush prey, or to communicate with other salt cats. <laughs> I like the white They do on this the in the most elegant I way possible. With feces and urine. While solitary, call. they do meet up when it's time to mate, and they will travel vast distances, drawn to the scent markings of their potential mate. <laughs> 
Breeding <laughs> happens from mid-spring to early summer and will result in one to three kittens. Keeping away from predators, salt cats prefer to use trees, hollows, or other animals' burrows to have their kittens. Born tiny, blind, and dependent on their mothers, by their third month, they can join their mom on the hunt. Oh. An addition that I can't imagine being all that helpful. <laughs> Nevertheless, this kitten is doing the best it can to help its mom track down a meal. Salt cats are primarily nocturnal, and when the sun goes down, it's time to hunt. Unsurprisingly, for a cat of its size, it specializes in small vertebrates, like mice, birds, and in the northern part of their range, frogs. Huh. This cat has caught the scent of a frog. She approaches slowly. With excellent night vision and a killer sense of smell, a frog is no match for a salt cat. Or so she thought. Within striking range, she pounces. But she loses it in the grass. In this case, the small cat is the Goliath, and she'll have to look elsewhere to feed her kitten. The frogs are so small. But the slow. night wasn't a loss for everyone. This melanistic salt cat swaggers home in the morning with a mouthful of mouse. Though salt cats are vulnerable in some parts of their range, they are considered a species of least concern. While they are incredibly day. hard to spot in the wild, this one isn't as camera shy as you might think. That one looks like a kitten. Uh-huh. Maybe it is. It's curious. Who says cats don't like selfies? Uh, Living primarily in grasslands, these cats haven't suffered much from deforestation. They do struggle with habitat destruction, especially with the construction of roads in their territory, and cars are what a leading cause of death for Jeffrey's cats. Aww. But often, their territory is converted into Jeffrey's farmland, cat. in which they can survive, as where there's farms, there's mice. mice. <laughs> Jeffrey's cats also fall victim to poachers and their pelts are the second most trafficked in the world. Ah, damn it. That said, like most small cats, and Jeffrey's little, cats, so or salt cats, then. are incredibly understudied <laughs> and underfunded. Hmm. We are still just scratching the surface of what most we people know are like, what? It's just a cat! Felids. And until we know more, they will remain South America's best kept secret. Ah, I know the spots on the back of their ears. Oh, you can kind of see it. The right white, there. yeah. yeah. Ah. This white. Like tig baby tigers have Yeah, that. so tigers have it so that they, so predators sneaking up behind them, it looks like eyes. Yeah. So it looks like uh, it d will deter someone if they think you're facing them. Uh, the I didn't realize. attack when your back is to them. Yeah, I didn't realize small cats had them too. Uh, you're right. Well, it depends like, on if they've got predators. Except <laughs> tigers, who's their predator except bigger tigers? Mini leopards. Uh, maybe before. Maybe they had bigger predators oh, before. Oh, yeah. Uh, like in the jungles. Where also, they yeah. Is that a jungle? No. Super cute. <laughs> Sand cats and Jeffrey's the Jeffrey's cats. cat, a.k.a. Salt, salt cat. Salt cats. Yeah. <gasps> I feel like I would be a sand cat. No. Yeah. I don't know. Sand cat. I don't know. Which one's the laziest cat? A domestic house cat. <laughs> That's what I would be. Uh, all right. Well, check out Animal Logic. That's a really good channel. We'll link it to the uh, in the info before. But um, yeah, that's it for cats. Check out the merch store if you want buds. And if you don't have buds, wear your buds. See ya. Bye. If you liked this video, uh, don't like, don't comment, uh, don't subscribe, don't retweet, don't follow, don't reblog. Um, do not smash the like button. In fact, keep your fucking hands away from the like button. I'm more, stop. Stop.